Hello everybody, my name is JJ. So, when it comes to Canada, one of the questions that most people are interested in is whether this country is any different from the United States. People seem to want to know about cultural differences in particular, so let's talk about that. Is Canadian culture any different from American culture? So to begin, we obviously have to ask, what is culture? In my experience, a lot of people tend to use a definition of culture that is way too highbrow, like this. And then on the other extreme, you have people that use a definition of culture that is way too narrow and specific. Canadians tend to do this a lot. In Canada, we have this thing called a loony. In Canada, we spell it C-O-L-O-U-R. We have Tim Hortons. But I prefer this definition of culture from Merriam-Webster. The characteristic features of everyday existence shared by a people in a place or time. And I found a cool little graphic the other day that expands on this definition by sorting these characteristics of daily life life into 11 categories. Language, medical cures, religion, child rearing, food, folk art, celebrations, jokes, manners, clothes, and working schedules. Now, this obviously isn't a perfect summary of everything that goes into making a culture, but it is a good start. So let us go through these 11 categories together and see just how different Canadian culture is from American culture or not. Number one, language. In both Canada and the United States, most people speak English as their first and only language. In the majority of cases in both Canada and America, English is the language of work, school, shopping, entertainment, journalism, and the internet. That said, in both Canada and America, there is a sizable minority of people who do not speak English. In the US, the majority of these people are immigrants, particularly America's large population of immigrants from Latin American countries. Most non-English speaking Americans thus speak Spanish. And in large parts of the United States, there is a culture of Spanish-English bilingualism, in which signs and stores and services are offered in both Spanish and English in order to accommodate the large Spanish-speaking community. In Canada, however, the non-English-speaking minority is divided almost equally between immigrants and French Canadians. And French Canadians are not as evenly distributed across Canada as Spanish-speaking immigrants are in the US. French Canadians mostly just live concentrated in Quebec, so as a result, French-English bilingualism is not as much a fact of life as Spanish-English bilingualism is in the US. Though, for complicated political reasons, the Canadian federal government also provides a lot of services across Canada in French, at a rate much higher than the actual numbers of French speakers would justify. Different immigrant-heavy parts of Canada and America may have a prominent role for other languages too. For example, an area with a lot of Chinese immigrants might have a lot of Chinese language stores and signs. So, is there a significant cultural difference when it comes to language between Canada and America. Yes, but it is relatively minor. Number two, medical cures. Canada and the United States both use high-tech chemical medicines that are the product of vigorous laboratory research and extensive bureaucratic verification. Weak medicines can be purchased in stores. More intense medicines have to be prescribed by doctors or surgeons or hospitals. Doctors and surgeons and medical researchers in turn have to undergo a lot of education and certification and training before they can practice. Now in both countries, of course, you do have a fringe of people who partake in so-called alternative medicines. The answer lies in essential oils. But I would say the majority of people regard this kind of stuff quite skeptically. So is there a significant cultural difference between Canada and the United States when it comes to medicine? No. Number three, religion. In both Canada and the United States, the majority of people are either practicing Christians or grew up in Christian homes. The dominant flavors of Christianity are Catholicism and a vast array of different Protestant denominations. How seriously Canadians or Americans take Christianity depends a lot on where in the country they live. Rural areas are generally more Christian than urban ones. The American South is very Christian, while Quebec is very not. Canada and the United States also have two of the largest Jewish populations on Earth. There are small but significant populations of Muslims, Hindus, Sikhs, and Buddhists as well, most of whom are immigrants. These days, however, a lot of people in both countries are a mostly secular people who do not take religion very seriously one way or another. So, is there a significant cultural difference between Canada and the US on religion? Now, a lot of Canadians would say yes, there is a huge cultural difference. But I think this is a good example of a place where a lot of people can sort of miss the bigger cultural picture. A lot of Canadians who would say there is a big cultural difference between the two countries on religion would focus 
entirely on the role that evangelical Christianity plays in American politics, but that is ultimately a political difference, not a cultural one. A cultural assessment of religion would ask questions like, A, what is the dominant religious tradition and heritage of this place? And B, what is the general role of religion in daily life? And on these questions, Canadians and Americans have way more similarities than differences. Okay, number four, child rearing. In both Canada and the US, the dominant social expectation is that children will be born to a married couple. It is of course getting much more common for children to be born to unmarried parents or a single mother, but this is still the exception to the norm. In both Canada and the US, I would say there is also a societal bias that treats the mother as the more ideal caregiver. This is reflected in the fact that women tend to get primary custody of children when there is a divorce. Either way, in both countries, children are raised by their biological parents. Because it is so common for parents to work full-time jobs, a lot of very young children also spend a considerable amount of time in daycare. And by the time they are four or five years old, they are usually spending the majority of their days in school. Kids usually live with their parents until they're in their 20s. In both countries, children are raised to be confident and independent. And as they get older and older, they tend to have a more and more egalitarian relationship with their parents. So is there a significant cultural difference between Canada and America when it comes to child rearing? I would say no. You're not gonna see any books in American stores called like, The Canadian Guide to Raising Kids. Number five, food. Food is probably one of the hardest cultural issues to talk about in Canada and America because it is so diverse. North American food has been very heavily influenced by immigration and foreign styles of food, you know, like Mexican, Chinese, Italian, Japanese are very common. That said, the native food traditions of Canada and America are very similar and tend to reflect various food staples that are produced on the North American continent. This includes foods containing a lot of wheat flour and milk and salt and sugar, including burgers and hot dogs and pizza and french fries and ice cream and sandwiches and ice cream sandwiches. North Americans eat a lot of beef and pork and chicken and eggs as well. Plus certain fruits and vegetables are very popular like corn and tomatoes and apples and oranges and bananas and strawberries. So are there any substantial differences between the two countries when it comes to food? No, not really. There might be a few special Canadian snack foods that you can't find in America and vice versa, but that is not what food culture is. Number six, folk art. I think a lot of Canadians and Americans do not really think much about folk art one way or another. It is sort of a very niche thing. That said, the folk art of Canada and the United States tends to be very influenced by pioneer life. It reflects a lot of the technologies and chores that were common to rural life in the early 19th century. This includes quilting and knitting and needlepoint, as well as sign making, wood carving, holiday decorations, and metalwork. In both Canada and the United States, there is also a concerted effort to keep alive some of the folk art traditions of the Native American people, including their wood carvings, beadwork, weaving, and printmaking. Any substantial cultural differences here, I would say no. Number seven, celebrations. In Canada, the biggest celebration of the year is Christmas, same in the United States. In both countries, Christmas has lost a lot of its original religious meaning and evolved into a mostly secular thing. After Christmas, in both countries, the next biggest celebrations include Thanksgiving, Easter, and New Year's. Birthdays are a time of big celebration for young people, while for adults, it's weddings. Both Canada and the United States celebrate a patriotic day in July. In the US, it's Independence Day, July 4th. In Canada, it's Canada Day, July 1st. The activities for both days are basically the same, you know, barbecues, going to the beach, typical summer fun. Do we see any substantial cultural differences when it comes to celebrations? Not really, despite the minor difference of celebrating the big patriotic day several days apart. Canadians and Americans also celebrate Thanksgiving a few weeks apart for reasons most people don't really know or care about. Number eight, jokes. Comedy is a big part of life in North America with funny movies, TV shows, comics, and websites extremely popular to both consume and make. In daily life, people like to be funny and try to make other people laugh. In both Canada and America, I would say the most popular topic of jokes tends to be observational stuff. You know, mockery of powerful or popular things and like exaggerations of the absurdities of daily life. She's a rescue. Yeah, I rescued her. Really? Did you pull her out of a burning building? Are there any substantial differences between the two countries when it comes to jokes? Absolutely not. Something that is funny in Canada will always be funny in America, and something that is funny in America will always be funny in Canada. Number nine, manners. Both countries highly value individualism and personal freedom, so good manners tends to revolve around respecting other people's personal space and dignity, and beliefs and identities. Bad manners, in turn, involves making unwanted physical contact, 
or making disparaging comments about someone's appearance or race or religion. In both countries, there is a high premium placed on being polite and friendly to strangers. There are also a lot of etiquette rules surrounding bodily functions. Basically, always be clean and tidy, especially when you're eating. So, are there any substantial cultural differences between Canadians and Americans when it comes to manners? Now, obviously, Canadians have a reputation for being more polite than Americans, but let us deconstruct this for a second. When somebody says that Canadians are more polite than Americans, what they're actually saying is that Canadians are better at adhering to a shared set of cultural manners than Americans are. People don't say Canadians have more rules for good manners or different rules for good manners than Americans do because they don't. At best, you can say Canadians maybe follow the same rules slightly better. That isn't much of a cultural difference. Number 10, clothes. Both Canadians and Americans dress in a mostly casual style, you know, jeans, t-shirts, polo shirts. There's also a huge influence of sportswear through things like hoodies and baseball caps and joggers. These days, it's usually only in very formal situations that people dress up in suits or dresses, although some jobs have a more formal dress code than others. In both Canada and the US, clothing remains very much divided by gender. Women have a different style of clothing than men, and clothing shops address this reality. The difference in male and female fashion isn't as dramatic as it used to be, but a woman who dressed in an overly masculine way would be considered kind of odd. And a man who dressed too womanly? Well, that almost never happens. Any cultural differences here? No. Canadians and Americans do not dress differently. And lastly, number 11, working schedules. In both Canada and the US, the standard working schedule is 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Saturdays and Sundays are the standard days off, with stores usually only open for a shorter period of time, or in some cases closed altogether on Sunday. That said, people who work retail jobs tend to work different hours than people in other types of work. Both Canadians and Americans take an average of two weeks of vacation off of work every year. In Canada, this is required by federal law. In the United States, it is not, but this doesn't seem to affect outcomes very much. Generally speaking, the better your employer, the more weeks of paid vacation you will be given. Though in both countries, I would say people are generally a bit cautious about taking more than two weeks of vacation if they can. It can look a little bit spoiled, and there is always a fear about falling too far behind in the work if you leave for that amount of time. Are there any substantial cultural differences when it comes to working schedules between Canada and America? As I said, there are some legal differences between how work schedules are regulated in Canada versus America, but as a cultural matter, Canadian and American attitudes are basically the same. We are a hardworking people. So, according to this informal survey of 11 realms of culture, you can see that the differences between Canada and the United States are either extremely minimal or basically non-existent. I would say it is only really in the realm of language that you have something that could be described as a visible cultural difference. And even then, the divide revolves around the country's number two language rather than the language of the majority. Because Canadians are really obsessed with not being Americans, they tend to really misunderstand the nature of the differences between the two countries. Canada and the United States are different in some ways, but the differences are either legal and political, in the sense of being a product of different legal and political systems, or regional, in the sense of reflecting small, geographically localized differences within the context of a larger shared culture. This is to say that Canada is no more culturally distinct from the US than Alberta is from Quebec, or Alabama is from Vermont. Are there any aspects of culture that you think I overlooked in this video? Or do you think I perhaps missed some major cultural differences between Canada and the US? Let me know in the comments below. Through our shared cultural medium of English, I will do my best to check them out.